So in last week's mini Just a Chip episode, Aiden, we talked about freezing the timeline and actually booking out that time in your diary so that you're working on the days that you're working and you're not working on the days that you're not working to make sure you don't hit burnout, to make sure that you get to spend time doing the things you want to do. However, there is a thing here which I know a lot of people would have been thinking. If we freeze the timeline, if we start booking out time in our diaries to make sure that we don't do events on Sundays or don't do events on maybe that week over the festive period, what happens if we get a gig coming where there's a very, very good opportunity? Should we turn it down or should we start to get prepared to understand whether we know if we're going to take it or not? And that's why, Aidan, in this episode, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the wonderful world of trade-offs. Now, for for those that aren't familiar with the concept of trade-off, it's uh, uh, understanding and accepting that every decision, every reaction, every behaviour has results. It has consequences. And when you make an informed decision about a a, a behaviour, an action, uh, there are going to be significant consequences as a result of it. So in understanding the difference between like cause and effect, if you like, you can understand what the trade-offs will be. For example, taking a gig on a time that you blocked out and said no well what are the trade-offs there is it at a time that you could perhaps manage or is it going to contribute to burnout which we definitely don't want and when you're really clear on that uh the, the decisions based over the action and the consequence you're going to be much more equipped to almost get your mind out of the way when it comes down to making these decisions because as humans we are uh, emotional believers we we think emotionally more so than rationally so when we think uh, or try to justify things to ourselves rationally it can obviously get looped and warped and that's why a lot of uh, a lot of people say they're going to do things and then not don't do it and it just gets a bit confusing but what we want to uh, suggest here is actually you prepare your trade-offs right now And there was a really great exercise that stood out to us in the book Essentialism by Greg McEwen. Uh, He actually gave out this really clear exercise um, on actually determining some criteria that would be act uh, that would sort of act as your trade offs. Uh, And you'd set some minimum criteria, some maximum criteria and follow up a process. And every time a new opportunity came in, for example, the absolute dream gig that could potentially be really worthwhile, it comes in and exists outside of your criteria. Well, what are you actually going to do? You filter that through. And we took this out and we turned this into a, a core part of actually the, the Learn to Thrive process, product building process. But that is so important to do. And really do this now. Set your decision making criteria so that when it gets to last minute inquiries in December, you're not going to panic and try and scoop for every possible gig and ignore all of those timelines and availability that you froze and set as from last week, if you listened, and really get your head out of the way so that you could just focus on doing the most important stuff. That's it. You start to get that criteria in place. You're starting to think about, okay, well, if a gig does come in and it's outside of my niche, what would make it worthwhile for me doing? If a gig does come in and I'm supposed to be spending a day with family, what would make it worthwhile doing? Chances are, if it's a million quid, one gig for that, you might think, ah, that's worth doing. But if it was just £200, maybe not. But the criteria might not just be money. It might be location. It, it might be whether it's going to interrupt with family time or not. If you're going to take a gig, one of your criteria must be, OK, well, I mustn't have anything booked in with my family. And the list goes on. This really depends on your value. But what we're starting to do here is we're starting to prep, get ready for it. We write down, bang, 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 bang. If a gig comes in, it must be this. It must be this. It must be this. I must not put myself out like this so that, like you said, Aiden, you can just filter it through the process and then shebang. You don't need to think about this when you're busy. You don't need to think and stress like, oh, should I do it? Is it worthwhile doing? And have those thoughts going back and forth because you can literally look down at your list and go, "Um, well, based on what I said when I had a clear mind before I got busy in December, I think this one is definitely worthwhile doing and it's worth accepting some of those trade-offs for. Or you might look at it and go, hmm, I get that there's a gig there, but when I look at this, no. No, it's not really. Well, it comes down to to your values as well. And I know that gets thrown around an awful lot in the world of personal development and all of this kind of stuff. Like, know your values, X, Y, Z. But it really is important because in the example that you gave there, Ashley, um, a million versus £200 for, for this gig on this one day that you were supposedly spending with your family. Well, 
if one of your core values, the values that you live your life by, is that of uh, pertaining to family, then it's a no-brainer. Even if it's a million quid, you don't take the gig. And I know that sounds bizarre to even be saying that. If somebody offers you a million pounds, turn it down. But because you're not breaking your own intrinsic beliefs, you're not going against your own belief system, you're not bending to somebody else's will, you're actually sticking to your own path here. It just makes your life so much easier. And as a result of this, I feel like it's one of those situations that just by following that, you get to live a more sort of accurate and fulfilled lifestyle based on what it is that you want to do. You're not worried about being reactive all the time and you get to be proactive, which is actually something that we're going to be talking about in next week's Just the Tip. But you get to be proactive and really intentional with your life. And just to throw it out there now, it doesn't just limit to inquiries coming in and your entertainment business. It goes so much further. You can look at this in other areas of your business, for example. Are you going to be taking sales calls on those uh, days that you've also got gigs? Are you going to be doing client meetings at the time that you're not working or not performing or, or, or anything like that? It can go to that extent, but you can also rip it out and put it into your personal life as well in understanding like uh, a really great example that um, Rian actually spoke about. Rian Doris, he came on the podcast a while back talking about peak performance and productivity. Uh, I believe that was episode 52. Um, the only reason I remember that is because of 52 playing cards and all that jazz. It's really sad, but uh, it's stuck. such a magician such a magician but it's stuck and i, I don't care because it was a bloody fantastic episode um but when i first met Rian, it was actually through a, a course that he'd released zero to dangerous and one of the components in there is that he understood that the trade-off criteria of drinking alcohol during the week was actually negatively impacting his work and his efficiency his productivity his output and all that stuff through uni so what he actually did is he set these minimum criteria he understood that the trade-off was just not worthwhile so actually no drinking during the week or, or no going out during the week with friends and and by living that as a rule of thumb he was able to shift and transform and achieve so much more and this is kind of a call to action again i know we don't usually do it this direct but right now Go and set your personal and professional criteria to basically get rid of all of these little decisions because it's willpower at the end of the day. It saps away your energy and your mental resources, which you need to be a, a, a slick entertainer when it comes down to the seasonal period and all year round, to be honest. Exactly. You've hit the nail on the head there with this. You're forward planning to make your business more automatic so that you don't have to work for it. It's just happens naturally you're investing less time into it because all of these simple thoughts which you might think oh well it's easy to decide whether i need to turn a gig down or not that's still a thought that's still an element of consciousness that you've got to put into it and if you can make this whole process easier to know whether it's like a yes i do this or a no i definitely don't do that you just literally look at your spreadsheet or your word document or your notes or whatever or whatever's in your head you just go well, I know that I'm automatically going to do this. So you don't need to put so much effort. You don't need to put so much thought into it because we know if you have so many thoughts going into various little things throughout the day, then by the time you come to doing a big task, it's already at the end of the day and you already feel worn out and tired. And that's why people get stuck in the hustle because they're caught doing all these little things, these little low level priority things like, oh, maybe this thing and, and this thing and this thing. And, and then before you know it, those little, little minute things, which is what we're talking about here, that takes up an entire day because there's a multitude of them. And then you just don't have the time to put into anything else. And this is just a one step step into the right direction to save you from that so that you can free up those elements of time as well exactly that exactly that and what we'd love for you to do if you are enjoying these episodes as usual make sure that you're giving them a follow make sure that you're subscribing and doing what all the cool youtubers actually say nowadays but do it with the podcast because um, we'd love to have you on board for more episodes um, but also if you'd love to to sort of Give us a little hand and, and give us a little nudge and help the podcast grow overall. Ashley, what is the one thing that people can do right now to help us? I don't know. All I can think of here, Aiden, is if I was going to listen to a new Magical Mentalism podcast and I wasn't really sure whether to invest my time into it, I'd probably go and look down at the reviews and see if it's if it's worthwhile listening to. Oh, that's, that's given me an idea. Maybe the people listening right now could potentially leave us a review, right? 
I think that would be wonderful. So wherever you are, whichever player you're on, providing your player allows reviews, go and give us a cheeky little review. I think you could probably do stars and words. We'd love stars and words. The more, the merrier, the better it gets. The I insert other words here. Go and give us a review if you're enjoying these episodes. But more importantly, stay tuned for Sunday where we're going to be releasing another incredible episode of the TSM, The Successful Mentalist podcast. Catch you soon.